it's an amazing thing and a powerful thing. You're not the only one, right? This, this happens to a lot of people. And so I, I went and had a holotropic breathwork session year, years ago, and it was pretty much what, what you would figure it would be. Um, I was, it was interesting to see the, the range of people there. And holotropic breathwork, just to, to answer, um, to, to explain exactly what it is to all your viewers and listeners, is this therapy in which you go into a room with several other people and you listen to very loud music and you breathe as hard as you can for three hours. So if that sounds intense, it's because it really is. So I was curious, you know, I talked to people, I talked to a um, psychologist who used this with 11,000 people at a hospital and did case studies of about 450 of them and found it was the most effective therapy for even schizophrenics, for people with addiction problems, for people with anxiety, which is incredible. So, so I went and talk to some other experts, uh, pulmonologists and other people who study breathing to find out, well, what's happening to the body? Because what I heard in that class is the more you breathe, you're just oxygenating your whole body. You're bringing more oxygen into your brain. You're not. <laughs> you're bringing way less oxygen to your brain yes. and way less oxygen to your body, which is why your hands go numb and your feet go numb because you're off-gassing all of this carbon dioxide Carbon dioxide plays its essential role in vasodilation and with circulation. So without that CO2, you are inhibiting circulation. So what they think is happening, even though this is a burgeoning area of science and no one's studying it because there's no, I, I guess either people don't know about it or there's no interest in it, but you are limiting oxygen and blood flow to the brain, to certain areas that control things like visual processing, um, control things like the, the idea of, of, of death, living in death, like the limbic system, control areas of, of emotion. So you're, you're essentially shorting those areas out in these certain ways. And some people believe that you're getting so little blood flow to the limbic system that it starts reacting as if your body is dying, which is why these people have these rebirthing which could be one of the reasons why these people have these rebirthing um, extraordinary experiences. I found it to be extremely hallucinatory. Wim Hof breathing um, has some wonderful hallucinations as well. And it's just, um, I've been uh, talking with Andrew Huberman down at, at Stanford, who has the ability to study this stuff and is very interested. And I, I really want to go in an MRI and do this and have him look at my brain as I'm just huffing and puffing to see exactly what's going to happen. Because what I've found, these therapies, holotropic breathwork has been around for 50 years. No one's gone into an MRI to, to look at what's happening. Wow. This is a technology that's easily available mm. and I think could, could really uh, show us some insights on, on, on what's going on. So by no means am I saying that limitation of oxygen and, and blood flow to the brain is a bad thing. It's allowing your body to, to access and function in different ways. To me, all of these breathing techniques, especially Hoff's version of, of TUMO, it's what do you do? <laughs> you're breathing as hard as you can, then you're holding your breath. So you're just like getting your body on this teeter-totter Mm -hmm. to make it more comfortable with breath holding and make it more comfortable with breathing too, too heavily. You're, mm -hmm. you're really stretching it out and making it flexible. That's, I think, one of the reasons those breath works uh, work so well. And, and his, his version of breath work, you know, this thing's a thousand years old. There's a zillion pranayamas that do the same thing.